Evening all, and welcome back to episode 18 of Kerbal Space Program Kerbalism. Now, in the last episode, we tested some rovers on Minmus and the Moon, um, trying out different designs to find out what would be best for Duna. I have gone back to the Moon with the rover and driven around a lot, an awful lot. Um, I think I spent, uh, well, I think four hours driving around there um, at accelerated speed as well. Just getting all the science, getting everything I could do, testing the rover out as much as I could, breaking far too many wheels and having to launch new ones, but yeah, nonetheless, I tested it all. One thing I did notice was that I lost signal to the rover a lot, an awful lot. I had to wait for the orbiter to come around to relay the signal to Kerb and get about 20 minutes of uh, driving around and then it would stop again. So what I'm doing here is I'm building a satellite with a antenna that can be a relay on it and putting it into a polar orbit of Kerbin. That way, hopefully I can get a bit better coverage from behind the moon, behind Mimus. Don't really know how that's gonna work. Not entirely sure, but it's a start anyway. Perhaps putting polar, or or polar orbital satellites around the moon or Mimus would give me a much better area to cover it all. It's, uh, it's finding a way to bounce that signal back to Kerbal, Kerbin as much as I can so the rovers can be done because on Duna obviously I'm not going to have a lot of communications with it it's going to be purely from the orbiter back to Kerbin so the higher the orbiter can get the orbiter the longer it will stay in contact with the rover but I've got to be careful because I'm not entirely sure on the range of the antenna I think it's pretty good I think it will cover it could be on, on one of um, one of Duna's moons, which I can't remember for the life of me what they're called. But yeah, it's um, it could be on there, and I'm sure it would still work. And now the relay satellites in orbit, it's about time to turn our attention to the actual Duna mission. Now, getting to Duna isn't going to be that much of a problem. It's only about a thousand five hundred more delta v than getting to the moon, so shouldn't be too difficult. However, it would be even easier if we had a refueling station in orbit. Simple, tiny space station with some spare fuel on it, so when we initially launch the Duna rover, it can dock, refuel, and then have a full supply for its trip over there. That way I wouldn't have to worry about carrying all the weight of it from Kerbin up. It can be done in stages, so let's look at designing a, a refueling station. But before that, a quick trip to the research centre to see what new goodies we can get. What have we unlocked? Obviously 1,200 science from gaining all sorts of things on the moon. Been driving around there for, well, as I've said, a long time. Um, did gain the Mark II cockpit thing. I, I've never been very good at space planes, at SSTOs. Never I can get them up there and normally they come terribly crashing down and explode or I don't have enough fuel or it all goes terribly wrong so that's probably not something I'm going to be doing anytime soon. Though, mm, entertaining to try I suppose. Air brakes would certainly be useful to recover having them on the large um, orange fuel tank as it comes down. That would be quite useful there and I'm not sure we need any parachute. Mm. Uh, let's see here. Large reaction wheels. Ah, yes, a greenhouse and a protein lab. I, I think that should be. We're gonna build. Although it's gonna start as a refueling station, why not actually have it as the beginnings of an actual proper station up there? Be here anymore? Make sure ascendancy that would be useful, but uh, Gigantor solar arrays pretty much a must for any decent space station. Uh, signal processing has been increased, that was helpful. Now, what else would go well? Some, some structural parts would be useful, being able to spread the station out a bit. Uh, Advanced wheel. I 
Ah, the larger docking ports. Or the standard docking ports, I should say. Yes, they'll, they'll definitely be useful. The manufacturing quality. Ooh, the last long grid extreme environments. Excellent. Ah, here we are. Beams and structural panels. And a harpoon. Hmm. Um, I'm not really sure whether that's worth the 300 science. I mean... Mechjib Ascent would be very useful. And the inline reaction wheel would. Decisions, decisions. Where to go? Um, let's go with the inline reaction wheel. There we are. And now we don't have enough science for anything else, so, well, we've... Uh, yes, let, let's go with that, and... Uh, and this is what we've gone with in the end. It is a very simple starting station, uh, if I pull that off there. Uh, it's got... Your standard little living spaces, a great big greenhouse, so... We can get lovely replenishable food. Um, I chose to add ladders all the way down the back to make life a bit easier for the kerbals moving around, but don't know if they're needed or not. We've got a little bit of food and oxygen down here. This actually has just under a year's worth of oxygen with it. And it says 200 days of food, but once the actual greenhouse kicks in, once it's started, it actually it says perpetual, so infinite food, essentially. The big thing that comes along obviously needing to refuel uh, refuel, re refuel the auction essentially, refill the auction. Also, uh, 360 days before the kerbals go mad, and that's with one kerbal in here. If I were to add a second or a third, uh, we get 300 days, but obviously the auction drops lower. So, it's a start, it's got lots of expansion abilities on the bottom, so. It's definitely a start. Uh, the other thing I'm going to do as well is change out these solar panels because we did unlock the big ones, the, the Gigantor ones. I never can find them in the list. There they are. That'll be much better once that comes out. Oh, lots of energy, lots of everything. All good. Uh, oh, hidden away. There. Oh, it pokes through ever slightly, but that no matter. The lower boost I've just gone with three gigantic boosters here. Um, it's got three thousand eight hundred. Needs about three thousand four to get into orbit. So, uh, we'll see. We'll we'll see what happens here. Yes, all going well. I'll see you in orbit. And there we are, in orbit. Quite a low orbit. I might boost this up to about 100k, because that seems like a good good round number. Um, but we are here, we, we have got it. We've got our our food going. Uh, we've still got a little, bit of, a little bit of fuel left, 485 litres, so that's good, that could be used to refuel something else, although I think I want to bring up some orange tanks and stick them on probably in a, a sort of an X pattern here one on top, one on the bottom, and leave the two side docking ports for docking yes, this is this is a success which I'm thoroughly impressed about actually, I, I really expected this to fall in doom and I, I did fire some of the launch or, or most of the start of the launch without even turning the engines up didn't realize uh but we're here we're here and i just want to quickly test going behind the planet obviously kills our side of animals and the greenhouse does munch on power does munch on it quite a bit 
Do we have enough power to survive nighttime on Kerbin? Let's see. Yes, yes we do. Excellent. So, now what we need to do is uh, boost ourselves up to a hundred kilometers. And there we are, a hundred K. That makes life a bit easier for targeting the station during launches. Hmm. Let's see. Station, there we are, except. That's better. Now it's got the correct icon. So, Jenski, enjoy your stay. And after far too long of a time and about six or seven probe crashes because I just simply got it all wrong, I have finally managed to get a full jumbo tank. Um, the closest I got beforehand, which I didn't record actually, was about half a tank up here, which I completely screwed up, flew past the station and uh, couldn't recover before it crashed back into the planet. So, got a little bit of fuel left here as well actually, so this was really successful, this one. Let's empty out the fuel for that. There we are. Um, I do need to re-orbit the station as well. Um, re it's not on a level orbit actually slightly off which means trying to line with it when you launch from the station it's awkward when you launch from the KSE sorry it's awkward to do it's um yeah a bit of a pain don't have the rendezvous planner yet or the ascent guidance mm, want to unlock that because that's going to make life so much easier yes that's me being lazy but yeah, that's what I want to do uh, so this is here um we've got a I'll put a probe here, and this has got lots of RCS in it. In fact, I didn't use any of the RCS, which surprised me because I'm, I did use RCS. Hmm, how strange. I certainly did use RCS coming in here. So, hmm. Anyway, uh, yes, this is here, but it's been like a day before I've got this actually working. It's, it's. I cannot believe how long it's been. So I'm going to bring the Duna Rover up here now some 40 days before she's supposed to launch and uh, that will give me plenty of time to actually dock her and hopefully get her all prepared for going off to Duna. So seeing as I didn't particularly plan my launch for the space station, got to remember to do that in the future, I now need to basically fly around and around and around on a higher orbit waiting for the station to catch up with me. That's yeah, that's the way I'm going to do it. I'm going to increase my carry apps to above 120 just so I can time walk faster using the RCS here. Because I don't have as much fuel in that tank as I expected. That's, uh, yeah, a little bit worrying that, but oh well. We've got a station full of fuel up here. It won't be long till we've got it. And finally, we have an encounter with the station. 0.9 kilometers. That's pretty damn good. All I need to do is line the ship up. With it and make sure we're coming in at the right angle because I don't want to overshoot it. Now let's just accelerate time and see how close we get. Looks like very close.
Right, let's slow us down, kill our velocity, competitive station, and line up. Docking is something that's got to be done slowly. I'm a terrible person for rushing everything, and I always fly past and have to turn around and come back and change things and don't get things lined up properly, and it's, it's a lot of hassle, so much better to get yourself as close as you can first go around, kill your velocity completely, in here, there we are, pretty much killed, and then sort of come in slowly, come in piece by piece, very, very gently. The actual space shuttle used to dock with the ISS at, at, at tiny amounts, tiny, tiny amounts. It wasn't even like 0.1 of a meter of a second. It, it was, it was tiny, absolutely tiny. But luckily, Kerbal Space Program's a little bit more forgiving than that, and uh, you can happily smash into a space station doing about two kilometers a second, and it'll dock. I don't want to do that because there are solar panels and things in the way, and they have a habit of coming off if you hit them too hard. So. Let's go in gently. Of course, the weirdness to this time warp causes the station to move. So, there's that. Right, other little checks to make sure you know what you're doing. Uh, control from the docking port you want to do, shouldn't make any difference to me here, but best to do that. Make sure you are targeting the docking port you want to dock with. Sometimes it's quite difficult to do. One, set a target, there we are. Because sometimes the centre of the mass of your station could be down here somewhere, and you don't want to dock with a solar panel or anything like that, really. Um, not what you want to be doing. Luckily, time warp's behaving itself now. We're close enough, so here we go. The other thing you should do, which I've forgotten to do, is go to the station, control from that docking port that you're targeting, and tell it to point at your docking port. I haven't done that, and I'm a bit too close to do it now. Uh, that's that's a silly mistake because the station's not going to be aligned properly now. It's not going to be ro not rotated right so much, but it's not going to be uh, angled correctly. But I think this will be fine. I, I think. Yep, I think we're going to be lucky here. I don't even know what this is set up to. Upside down at the moment. Uh, here we go. Here we go. And let the magnets take over. And we're docked. Yay. I need to do something about strengthening this because this is wibbly wobbly like mad. Um, if I were to control from here and tell it to 
point north. Yeah, it 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 wiggles, it wobbles. It does all sorts of very strange things. So I might have to send good old Bill up with a couple of struts and strut these things together. Those two there, two there. I, I didn't realise you could attach things to a bottom of a heat shield, although I, I think I did realise you could do that because otherwise you wouldn't be able to stage it properly. But I put a docking port on here. I'm hoping the docking port will burn up in the atmosphere and the shield will take the rest of the brunt there. I, I didn't really plan that. That's a last minute sort of think that, oh dear, yes, Duna has an atmosphere, it will burn up in it coming in like that. So put a heat shield on there. Hopefully that will do the job. Uh, now, uh, you and you. Let's refill our little. Uh, I want to also shut down that engine before I accidentally one day fire up the station and do all sorts of weird things. Right. There we are. There we are. Okay, I'm going to turn on standard SAS and use that to point normal. Because for some reason it was wobbling with MacJab. Not sure why. I am going to twist twisty twist I'd like to point the greenhouse towards the Sun I don't know if it makes any difference I probably not but I just want to do that I want to want to give them all the light they can get just to keep things going and yes there we are we have a station in orbit that's capable of producing food. It will need upgrading, slightly rethinking as well, possibly. Uh, solar panels aren't exactly in the best of places, but anyway, it's there. And we have our rover in orbit, ready for 43 days time. So in the next episode, I think I'll accelerate time and we'll go to launch this to Duna. We'll 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 achieve that mission. Sunsets. And this episode comes to an end. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this episode and I do hope to see you again in the future. Uh, until then, as always, have fun.